Hey, how's it going? So a few days ago, I was in Washington, D.C. with my family on a mini vacation, and while we were there, we decided to go to the Air and Space Museum Annex, which is just outside the city. Now, you all probably know that I'm pretty interested in most fields of science, but I've always especially liked astronomy. You see, when I was a young child, my mother would try and coax me into wanting to be an astronaut when I grew up. I have this memory, and I've checked with her, and it turns out it's probably a manufactured memory my brain made up, but I remember her asking me, Dan, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said that I wanted to be a firefighter or something, to which she replied, no, you want to be an astronaut. She would point at the moon and say, look at that. Don't you want to go there someday? You can do that. Isn't that amazing? I know NASA isn't typically in the business of sending scrawny history nerds into space, and nobody's going to the moon these days anyway, but a part of me hasn't given up on that dream my mom planted in my head. Anyway, so I really like astronomy and space flight and all that, so going to the Air and Space Museum Annex is pretty exciting for me. Right there in one hangar, you can see everything from the capsules from the Mercury and Gemini missions all the way up to the Space Shuttle Discovery. With Discovery, until you're right there standing under Underneath the wing of the space shuttle, it's hard to get a scale for it, both physically and in terms of what it did. I mean, think about it, we sent this massive hulk of a vehicle that is the culmination of thousands of years of scientific and engineering brilliance, and sent it to space not once or twice, but 39 times over the course of 27 years. This thing put the Hubble telescope in space, and damn it all if it didn't look beautiful doing it. Say what you will about humanity, but we have never lacked an abundance of style. In the same building where you can see the remnants of some of of humanity's ugliest moments. Intercontinental ballistic missiles, bomber planes, the plane that dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima, all these hollowed out husks that serve as memorials to humanity's ability to be unspeakably cruel to one another. In that same building, which is in many ways a testament to division, you can see the exact opposite force playing out. Soviet satellite sits next to American, no longer in opposition, but in unity, at least in this. There's a specific scientific satellite there that is a co-creation of the Soviet and American space programs that wouldn't be able to exist without cooperation. It's in the same vein as the International Space Station, for example. These things are affirmations that humanity can overlook our petty differences and strive towards some higher ideal. That's what I love so much about astronomy, because it reminds us that at the end of the day, no matter what, we are all citizens of the same tiny rock in an endless universe, all looking up and wondering the same thing. What else is out there? I'll see you next week. We're going to talk about one of the worst men to have ever called this state home, D.C. Stevenson. The original thing about the reservation was kind of back in a couple of kilometers was they lived uh, in bark, kind of lean-tos they called them. Now.